Okay, welcome back to Cloud. We were just having a little fun here during the break, but uh, uh, we're back for uh, more with uh, Kevin Connolly. Kevin, um, let's talk a little about, about these federal bailouts of the auto industry, the banking industry. What's your opinion on those? Well, what it seems to be pretty sad for all this federal stimulus funds, very little is really reaching the actual operating companies. The funds have gone to plug holes in state budgets. Uh, you're seeing that Wall Street is reporting record profits again with uh, one company just reporting a several billion dollar profit. And also, uh, we're seeing that uh, it's not getting down to where it really needs to create jobs. Okay. So you're, you're not in favor of the way these bailouts are being handled? It's not, it's not getting to where it's going to really do some good. Okay. What about, uh, we hear a lot about solar energy and that being a potential uh, industry that Florida could get heavily involved in. Uh, what do you think about that? Oh, that's a pretty exciting topic. Uh, we have the capability here in Sarasota to be the solar capital of Florida. All we lack is the political will to make it happen. We've got the companies here that are capable of producing the component parts. When we could be providing a, a solar hot water system at every single home in Sarasota County because the technology is there and the economics are there to support it. What we need to, know, to do, though, is to put together the organization to make that happen. Do you think that the, that the local government, the county commissions, the city commissions, should play a role in encouraging certain kinds of industries? In other words, uh, biotech or solar, like you said. Oh, very good question. And the answer to that is you create a level playing field and see what develops. Don't try to have a crystal ball and pick winners and losers because you'll lose in the long run. Create conditions where companies can prosper and then let the marketplace decide. So you don't think we should target, you know, hey, we're going to be the, the solar capital, we're going to be the bio and have the government foster one particular uh, group over another. You don't, no, you I don't, don't think, think that's a should. good idea. Okay. What about immigration? Um, a lot of people view this as a really serious problem in the United States. Others, not so much. What, what do you think? Well, the lifeblood of the United States has been immigration. That's where, why we are the home of the free and the land of the brave. Because it takes a lot of courage for someone to leave their home and come here. But it's got to be done legally. Because we are a society of law. And the whole rule of law is under threat when you turn around and have illegal immigration coming in. There are some uh, talk, there are some bills in the Florida legislature to deny benefits of, uh, of parents who, who are, have babies here that are U.S. citizens. Would you favor that kind of legislation to sort of and get tough on employers? Absolutely. I think we've, we've got to have the rules and we've got to reward those people who play by the rules because creating exemptions for people who don't, for expediency's sake, doesn't help our democracy. And I would add one other thing, too. We're a melting pot society. We need a language, common language to communicate, and English is the language. And anything that encourages the use of other languages is, does not create unity. What about the U.S. military? You're, you're, you've spent a lot of time studying history. You've spent a lot of time in and around the U.S. military. What do you think about the military today? I think we've got some of the most brave, courageous men and women in the service today. And these people are, in essence, uh, being asked to go above and beyond. We're burning our military out with these multiple tours into combat zones. And one good promising thing is Obama appointed a special forces general, General McChrystal, as the commander of Afghanistan, and he's implementing the policies we learned so well in Vietnam work. So I'm very optimistic about what will happen in Afghanistan. Do you think that that was our biggest problem in Iraq and Afghanistan initially was that we treated it like a conventional rather than a counterinsurgency war? Absolutely. I mean, our generals are fighting World War II and Korea all over again. Rather than Vietnam. Rather than Vietnam. And, and more of a strategy that we implemented towards the end of the Vietnam War would have been smarter? Absolutely. You have to empower the local people for their own security, and, and they have to buy into it. And a U.S. soldier walking down the middle of a road in a foreign land can't tell the good guys from the bad guys. That's why the Special Forces concept works so much better. It, you were up to your neck, incidentally, on the ground in Vietnam, sort of on the Vietnamization uh, policy. Uh, what do you think about that? Do you think that we abandoned them and we should have stayed, or do you think we needed to get out when we got out? We betrayed the South Vietnamese people. 
The Soviets and the Chinese kept the supplies pouring into the north. We cut the supplies off to the South Vietnamese army. And what is sad, more South Vietnamese died after the war than were killed during the war. It's estimated that two million died. 600,000 drowned at sea trying to escape in small boats. It is not a, a part of U.S. history which I'm proud of. And you were one of the ones who was helping those very same people get organized. That's right. I was the one that delivered the message from the United States, if you decide to be a free people, we'll help you. And we didn't live up to our commitment. What about turning back to, I, we got sidetracked there, but I wanted to talk about Vietnam a little bit, but uh, what about in Sarasota County, the 2050 plan, the plan on, uh, do you think that that is a wa was a wise plan for how to grow the, the, the county? Well, I was a developer up in New York for about eight years, building a residential subdivision. And when I bought a piece of property, the zoning was what it was. Uh, in 2050, they increased the, the density by 500% as a bonus to the developers. I think that was pretty generous. But where the county needs to be focusing on now is how they diversify the economy. Over the last eight years, we've lost 2,000 acres of land that was zoned for manufacturing. It was changed to residential or big box development. That was up on Un University Parkway, is that University right? Parkway was 500 acres, changed by the county, and the city of Venice grabbed 1,400 acres out there off Laurel Road. And you think that was a mistake because we've given up available land that could be used for industry? You lost your economic engine, which will drive your economy, which will create the multiple jobs. And uh, our focus on... Uh, on housing and construction and real estate you think is a, is a big mistake. Obviously, we're paying for it now, huh? It's a cart before the horse. Housing will develop out of demand for housing by a growing economic base. And housing by itself is not sustainable. You'll eventually either run out of land or run out of water or the market will shift on you. I guess you could sort of build your, your economy around retirees, senior citizens, med their medical care. Uh, I don't know. Well, um, I, that that's, work? that's the latest push, <laughs> but I, I, I suspect that with the changing economic climate throughout the country, the retirees are not going to be coming down here like they were at one time. At least they were, everyone is expecting the things to return to normal in two or three years, back to the development phase. That may not happen. The, uh, the owners of Lakewood Ranch have wanted to uh, expand it more into Sarasota County, into the northern part of Sarasota County. I think the county commission recently pass some amendments to sort of open the door to that. What, what do you think about that, the expansion of Lakewood Ranch, and the I east development out east? I think they should develop, but they should develop within the rules that were set up. There was the 500% increase in density was quite generous. They, should, they need to live within the rules. All right, we'll take our last break, and when we come back, we'll have our final segment with Kevin Connolly and our Weasel of the Week. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> 